following is a presentation of HBO Sports. There may be no place on Earth that stores as many answers to as many questions as the beginning. The origins of every story can unlock the greatest truths about what's come to be. And they can reveal unlikely connections between tales that once started just about as far apart as you could imagine. Long before he was known simply as Canelo, Saul Alvarez was given a pair of boxing gloves by his older brother. He treasured them, finding an unsurpassed thrill in what he could do with them. And in the years ahead, that thrill would only intensify. Long before he was known simply as Triple G, Gennady Golovkin too was introduced to boxing by an older brother. What ensued was a path of hope, tempered by adversity and ultimately propelled forward by fortitude. Nearly 8,000 miles apart, there were no doubt commonalities to their beginnings. Now, just days away, is the long-awaited culmination of a story they've come to share, promising an answer to the ultimate question. This is 24-7 Canelo Golovkin. High up the San Bernardino Mountains, more than a mile above sea level, you'll find the Summit Gym in Big Bear Lake, California. Here, the placidity of the panorama is countered by a discordant soundtrack. Gennady Golovkin at work. I stay at the same, the same place in Big Bear, the same gym, the same team, the same coach. I think this is very important. I feel very comfortable working hard every day. This is good, you know, strategy. He's extremely happy because in this training camp, I'm noticing a different a smile, a twinkle. Uh, he, he, he talks about the fight. Look at that, relaxed. He really wants to get in the ring and, and do his thing. Oh, very nice. Felt that one. Yeah. Think it's easy? <laughs> yeah. But now it's an interesting time for me. I want to win. Winning is any boxer's most fundamental goal. But the man they call Triple G has long triumphed with emphatic flair. For nearly a decade, in fact, every one of his fights ended on his terms, in the form of 23 consecutive knockouts. This past March, Golovkin looked to continue his knockout streak against Daniel Jacobs at Madison Square Garden in New York. My expectations. You know, this is a regular fight for me. Yeah, Jacobs, he's a very good fighter. He's a good boxer. I think he's number two in the middle of the division. The expectations for me as a coach were that Jacobs was a heck of a lot better than people were giving him credit for. So I expected a, a rough fight. Daniel Jacobs seems to be the biggest obstacle yet between Gennady Golovkin and the superstardom he's seen to be destined for since he showed up in the United States four and a half years ago. Lovkin looking, looking, wary of Jacobs. All it takes is one shot from Triple G. Hard right hand by Golovkin, down goes Jacobs. That early knockdown fulfilled the expectations of many ringside observers. But as the fight progressed, the boxing world found itself watching something unfamiliar. Gennady Golovkin in a competitive fight. Jacobs firing back, giving a good account of himself and coming back from the knockdown. If you land with the uppercut, let's get a little things going okay. with the uppercut and then land something. But bring it all the way back because he's countering, all right? All right. The threat of Jacobs' power is keeping Triple G just honest enough. Right hook by Jacobs, left hook by Jacobs. And Jacobs, no, he's not an easy fight for me. Daniel fought a smart fight. Uh, a bigger guy that was moving a lot, and he still had the durability to withstand the onslaught from Gennady. Oh, good upcut by Triple G. Golovkin digs in and tries to land some power shots. Oh, they go up back and forth. 
tremendous fight. For the first time in Triple G's professional career, the final bell sounded, and the outcome is in doubt. I'm not nervous because I know I win this fight. Okay, maybe I give him a couple rounds, maybe three, three rounds. That's it. Triple G! Gennady Golovkin escapes but faced the biggest scare of his career against Daniel Jacobs. And everybody said, oh, if you not destroy him, you know, you lost. Hey, come on. You know, this boxing, you know, just, it's my experience. It's a very good experience. Uh, we were happy that it was a 12-round fight because he's gonna have to know in his mind that he can go 12, 12 hard rounds against a top caliber opponent. He's never had to do that. I think that's why the Canelo fight was made. Jacobs going 12 gives him that glimmer of hope that uh, Canelo can, can be Golovkin. Nearly a three-hour drive south of Big Bear Lake in San Diego. Training for his September 16th meeting with Golovkin begins at dawn for Canelo Alvarez. And on today's early morning run, he's happy to be joined by his oldest brother, Rigoberto, making a brief visit to camp. A mí me inspiró él. Me inspiró él, me inspiró para ser peleador. Y me siento contento de que esté aquí y estar eh, compartiendo con él. Eh, yo creo que hay que estar en los momentos más importantes, ¿no? Con la gente que más, que más quieres. Y en los momentos más importantes, pues, para él, para él por su entrenamiento contra este peleador. Por eso quise estar yo acá. Inspiration, it turns out, can cut both ways. Years ago, as Rigoberto's own boxing career sputtered, he walked away into an early retirement. But watching his kid brother's relentless dedication to the craft eventually spurred him to return to the ring for several more years, with the sport remaining the bedrock of their unique bond. Es un muchacho que desde muy niño estuvo conmigo en los primeros pasos. Me decía que tenía que ser fuerte, el mejor, y para eso era entrenar duro. Me, eso me enseñaron mis padres, ¿no? Ayudar a mis hermanos. Eh, a salir adelante, entonces siento que era mi responsabilidad y, y creo que lo hice, lo hice bien. Estoy muy orgulloso de él. Six days a week, Canelo looks to further swell the pride of those closest to him as he prepares for the 52nd fight of his professional career. As it's been for years, the father-son duo of Chepo and Eddie Reynoso oversee the proceedings. And as their September 16th date with Gennady Golovkin approaches, the team is confident in their assessment of the matchup. Golovkin se ha visto fuerte como siempre. Eh, lo que sí he notado últimamente es que ya está un poco más eh, vulnerable a los golpes. Y creo que Golovkin nunca se ha enfrentado a un, a un peleador the nivel boxístico de Saúl. Time! Nice choice. Ese día le va a crear muchos problemas a Golovkin. Eso sí. Con su rapidez, con sus movimientos de cintura, con sus fintas. Con su trabajo de cuerdas, Saúl es un peleador muy completo. Me imagino y veo una pelea dura, pero me veo ganando. Me veo ganando y contundentemente. And today, Big Brother is pleased with what he sees. Toda mi vida lo he visto desde que era un pequeño, un niño. Pero lo veo ahora con mucho desarrollo. Se veo fuerte, con muchas ganas de, 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 lo que está, de lo que está haciendo y lo que está desarrollando. Time! Bien, bien, bien. bien. Mejor te veo, ¿eh? Mejor te veo. While Canelo's spirits benefit from a visit from his big brother, back in Big Bear, Gennady Golovkin's twin brother, Max, is a training camp fixture. But for the fighter, a visit today from another member of his team, longtime promoter Tom Loeffler, leads to a breezy excursion 
to LA place. A joyride on the lake. Nice break. I'm really enjoying. Just relax. I stay with my friends. This is beautiful. Oh, this is special time. Like special life. A respite from the gym is good for both the body and the mind. Even if the realities of the life he's chosen are never quite escapable. Boxing life is a very tough life. You know, this is a very difficult sport, difficult business, you know, very dangerous. Because everybody knows just maybe one punch change life. You know, it's very, very tough. You know, a lot of people wouldn't sacrifice being away from their family and their loved ones for such a long period of time in order to dedicate themselves to their career. But all the sacrifice, all the frustration is really what he went through to get this fight. Best reality. <laughs> reality offers an unforgiving schedule of training in this remote, picturesque town. Removed from his family, removed, in fact, from anything that could distract him from the task at hand. Gennady chose this place, Big Bear, because of the proximity to nobody. <laughs> the fact that he's alone up here, that's the way he likes it. The dedication, the discipline, the focus is 100% all the time because we have to have, or at least I have to have, the best Gennady I can have on fight night. It's the solitude that a, a fighter at this level needs to be the best he can be. Hard fight. A lot of blood, a lot of actions, a lot of dramas, emotion. Oh, I like this. Beautiful people, beautiful. Oh. Not today, only September 16. If runs provide opportunities to envision in detail everything he hopes Fight Night will bring, the gym offers ample outlets for his competitiveness, even in pursuits that don't come so naturally. In today's main event, Pupil squares off with Professor. Come on. I know this. All right, the seven G. To seven, okay? Okay. Come on. You wanna stop spinning them for me? So I have a chance? Uh -huh. ah. Just one more. I'm tired. Oh, that That's it. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And <laughs> still. And still the champ. Thank you, G. Thank you, boss. the sir down at old Del Mar. Take a plane, take a train, take a car. There's a smile on every face and a winner in each race. Where the turn On August 12, 1938, the Del Mar racetrack just outside of San Diego first gained renown as the site of the famed match race between Seabiscuit and Ligarotti. Eight decades later, the track's charms endure, especially for a boxing thoroughbred like Canelo Alvarez. Todos estos ya corrieron, va? Corren. Mañana. For a horse lover like Canelo, having Del Mar so close to camp offers a perfect diversion during rare breaks in training. Not to mention a chance to meet another Mexican athlete with his own impressive hey. resume. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, ¿cómo estás? Felicidades, eh? Igualmente. The 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh has won the Triple Crown. In 2015, Hall of Fame jockey Victor Espinoza rode American Pharaoh into racing lore, capturing the sport's first Triple Crown in nearly four decades. Este es un caballo que acabamos de comprar, se llama Pitino. Y es el que estamos esperando para el Kentucky Derby. Ojalá, ¿verdad? 
Ay, ay, ay. Entonces lo solté y luego lo tiró la. No ponche, eh. Toma, toma, toma. Dale una zanahoria. Para mí es un, un honor. ¿A ti te gustan los caballos? ¿verdad? Yo me siento orgulloso de que un mexicano esté triunfando acá en, en los Estados Unidos. Es en diferentes deportes, pero me siento identificado. If you want to be a champion, I mean, you have to sacrifice uh, uh, your, yourself. I always have respect for a champion because I know how much work goes through and dedication to be where he's at. Los que tienes de qué caballos tienes tú? No, españoles y frisian. The fighter and the jockey can also bond over one of the less appealing requirements of their professions, making weight. It's the one thing I really don't like, it. lose weight. Yeah, that yeah. is the hardest thing ever. And I'm lo sure mismo, for him too, lo lo mismo. Mismo, ¿eh? I see the scale and I'm going to the other side and I'm going to break it. <laughs> Just break that damn scale. Lo mismo, yo me he cortado la barba, me he cortado el pelo para ver si bajo 50 gramos. <laughs> There's clearly shared respect between Mexico's two top competitors in their respective sports. A stature Alvarez definitively earned his last time out in the ring. In a long-awaited collision with his countryman and rival, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. this past May. Mucha gente dudaba quién era el mejor. No sé por qué. This has become a showcase for Canelo Alvarez's outstanding skill set. Pues esperábamos que Chávez saliera a pelear, desgraciadamente, bueno, no no quiso. This is not one of the great all Mexican fights, but it's maybe one of the great all Mexican beatdowns. No me sorprendió que iba a ser una pelea fácil. Yo sabía lo que iba a pasar. Solamente quise dejarle en claro a la gente que en el boxeo hay niveles y que era muy superior a él. Canelo's fight against Chavez Jr. was so one-sided, in fact, that Abel Sanchez says he's barely bothered to watch it as part of his pre-fight scouting of the opponent. To the trainer, Canelo's 2016 bout with Liam Smith offers a more illuminative example of how he expects September 16th to play out. He throws combinations that are fast, but when he gets uh, going real fast, he has a, a tendency to be slappy. He, he hits with the palm of his hand. It's going to be to his detriment, that tactic right there, sitting up against the ropes. I don't think he'll do that against Golovkin, not at least not in the beginning, anyway. See, all those shots right there uh, from a Liam Smith are OK to take, but uh, you can't take those shots against uh, a Golovkin. If he gets lazy like he does in moments like this, if he's not on point for three minutes of the round, he's going to get knocked out easily. I see Canelo wearing down after six, seven rounds just from the fight itself, just the physicality of Golovkin and the technique and the experience of Golovkin against a young man that's not on his level. If Sanchez has his theory of how Canelo Triple G will unfold, to actually achieve that result, there's still work to do. And perfecting form appears to be among the team's top priorities in training. And I will remember your name and face on the day you were judged by the funhouse cast. And I will rejoice in your fall from grace when it came to the skyline, none shall pass. I don't think he's ever hit anybody 100%. He's never had to. He hasn't been tested because we really haven't had the opportunity because they haven't fought us. But they keep talking, they keep talking. Finally, Canelo's the one that stepped up. He's champion. I'm a champion. Just, I know my job. He knows his job. None shall pass. Because right now, it's the biggest chance. I show this fight for everybody, for the world. Canelo does everything well. Canelo is a very good boxer, and he's a warrior. He's proven it uh, time and time again. It's just that my guy is better. Very good. We're finished. A trainer's belief in his guy is nothing new in boxing. And yet in this instance, perhaps Sanchez does have a modicum of evidence to make his case. In the spring of 2011, Golovkin was preparing for the second defense of his middleweight title, while Alvarez had just captured a 154-pound belt. Their handlers saw mutual benefit to the fighters getting together to train. And right here in the Summit Gym, 
They joined one another in the ring. Canelo came up to Big Bear when he was about 19, 20 years old. Golovkin and Canelo sparred, I think, three times, maybe two, two or three times. But it was sparring. And sparring is so different. They're using big gloves, they're using the headgear, they're moving around. It's not a fight, it's sparring. He's a young boy. It is not hard sparring. I help him, he helped me like that. And I remember I asked him, why you not come to middleweight? He said, you know, just maybe later. No, later, future, we have a good, good fight. Yo tenía 20 años cuando hice sparring con él. Mejorado muchísimo. He peleado con muchos peleadores difíciles, me han dado experiencia. Soy un peleador más maduro, con más confianza arriba del cuadrilátero. Y obviamente tengo más fortaleza todavía que esa edad. Cuando hicimos sparring, Olopkin y yo, nunca imaginé que se iba a dar una pelea. Pero en el boxeo todo puede pasar, ¿no? Six plus years after that first meeting, their bout is taking place at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds. It's where Golovkin's fought his entire career. But newer territory for Canelo, who's boxed just once above 155 against Chavez Jr. in May. Me sentí muy bien en la pelea pasada en 164 y media. Creo que mi peso ideal 160, son 160, me voy a sentir muy bien. Me voy a sentir fuerte, me voy a sentir eh, rápido. Eso. Eso, búscalo. Vamos, boom, 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 bam, otra vez. Boom, 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 bam. Acá no va a haber ninguna ventaja con Golovkin. Peso medio contra peso medio. Entonces, sí tenemos más confianza en que va a ser una pelea muy competitiva, una pelea de mucho atractivo, una pelea explosiva. His opponent will certainly bring a track record of explosiveness into the ring, with Golovkin carrying not just his undefeated record, but also his 33 knockouts and 37 victories. Golovkin is a peleador that viene en, en un, haciendo una gran carrera, y cuando te enfrentas a un peleador disciplinado y con pegada que está en su momento es, es peligroso. Si a ti te dan una algo de dinamita, tienes que tener mucho cuidado de no jugar con ella para que no te explotes. Sabemos que enfrente hay un hay dinamita y tenemos que estar atentos para que esa noche no explote la dinamita. Eso, vueltita a los dos lados. Él es un, un reto muy grande. Vamos a trabajar duro para salir de este reto, para dar un paso más a mi historia y, y ese día me van a levantar la mano. Esto se va a conjugar 14 años de trabajo para demostrarle al mundo que hoy por hoy el Canelo es el número uno del mundo, el mejor libra por libra. Eso es lo que significa la, el triunfo sobre Golovkin. Yes, the stakes have long been high for Canelo Alvarez in the ring. But September 16th indeed presents an augmented opportunity as a potential crowning achievement in a career that's made him a superstar and as a defining moment in a journey that began when he was a 10-year-old boy. Ha habido momentos y hay momentos donde estoy en la cama y me pongo a pensar, ¿no? Todo lo que he hecho. Nunca imaginé la magnitud de lo que iba a poder tener o lograr, eh, pero me lo he ganado a base de mucho esfuerzo y creo que mm, es cuando me siento orgulloso y me siento con más ganas de salir adelante porque sé que quiero ser una leyenda. Canelo, he is maybe face of boxing. It's a big deal for me because I want a big fight. So many people said, he is young, he win. Maybe not. Even at their peak, all great fighters wear the hard roads they travel to stardom with a distinct pride. They like you to know about their far-flung beginnings, their uncommon struggles, their improbable stories. 
They want you to know all those who helped them along the way. And yet, in one of the sport's most intriguing paradoxes, they must depend on someone else entirely to truly reach the pinnacle of their craft. The perfect opponent. For all the wonder of an unblemished record, for all the splendor of knockout streaks, for all the attraction of real charisma and the value of national honor, great fighters need each other. They need each other to offer unprecedented challenge, to validate their place in history, and to culminate their most improbable tales. Next Saturday night, the long paths of Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin collide in the ring. Two of the best fighters in the world who need each other to reach the very pinnacle of their craft. Don't miss the fight. Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin, September 16th, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.